Sherman Rowland with Highland Park Lapidary and I'm going to show you how to set up your bolt wheel and how to adjust the speed of it and also put belts on and off. So when you get your bowl wheel, sometimes we may ship it with this expanding drum. This is the expanding drum. Um, this is a, a, a piece of equipment that we have made here in the States. Um, sometimes we'll pre-install. If yours is shipped without it being installed, the first thing you'll need to do is to unwrap your machine, uncrate it, and then this nut is a left-handed nut, which means it's going to actually turn to the right to loosen. Typically, it's left to loosen, right to tighten, uh, but in this case, it's left-handed because of the size of the shaft. So we're going to unscrew this nut, and you'll see this drum has two sides. It has sides that have the bolts and sides without the bolts. The side with the bolts is the side that, st that sticks to the outside. So I'll slip this over the shaft. And then uh, what I'm going to use is I'm going to put a drop of Loctite, which is a thread locker, on this thread before I put it together. So I have my Loctite right here. Use the blue Loctite, which you can buy at any kind of hardware store or auto parts store. And I'll just put one little drop on the threads. You can kind of see that I've got the drop there. I don't have to drench it just a little bit there. And then remember, it's, it's left-handed thread. So to put this thread on, I'm actually gonna do the equivalent of turning it to the left, which is actually tightening in this case. And once I've got the thread there, I'm gonna use two wrenches. A small wrench that I'll put on the shaft right here, and a big wrench on the outside. What I wanna do is I wanna tighten this so this is snugly tightened. Not so tight that it's going to pop this uh, uh, clip ring on the inside. There is a clip ring that retains the shaft, so you don't have to kill it to tighten it. You just need to have it snug. So I'm not using massive long wrenches. Uh, once that's done, the top cover here, bring the camera around here, the top cover here is where you're going to adjust your speeds. I'm going to open this up, I'll show you the speeds, and then we'll talk about putting belts on. Uh, we fully enclose the belts. And this unit, it makes it a little bit more difficult to get in and out of it, but it ensures that no loose clothing, uh, little kids' fingers, etc. You shouldn't have kids around your machine anyway, but it, it keeps anything from getting in the belts. And you just return, re, re, remove these six screws from the top, and this gives you access to the belts. Now, an important principle with a bull wheel is when you're doing your grinding um, with either the flat disc here with a pressure sensitive adhesive uh, sandpaper and the expanding drum, you generally use your higher speeds. Uh, I recommend with a new person starting, start it off with a speed that we ship it in. We actually ship it in the slowest speed and work your way up as your comfort level and, uh, and competence uh, improves. The bull wheel is a serious production piece of equipment. This is not a toy. So one of the important things when you're using a machine like this is no loose clothing, Always wear eye goggle, goggles, always wear a dual respirator, uh, which you buy like a 3M dual cartridge respirator because this is designed to be operated dry, not wet. So when we pull this cover off, we'll look inside here. You'll see there are uh, a step pulley here with uh, four different steps and then two pulleys here. It ships at the slowest speed. So this is just like a bicycle. This would be like where you'd crank and this would be your rear uh, sprocket. If I want to change the speed, I'm going to use this handle here. I'm going to loosen this handle. I can pull this back and you'll see my tension on my belt has uh, come off. And if I want to change this to a higher speed, I could uh, use uh, one of these larger pulleys here and to effectively speed the, the unit up. Now, the other thing you're going to note is I need to move these pulleys around a little bit if I'm going to line it. And so there's a set screw that you'll need to use to uh, uh, tighten or loosen these pulleys to move them side to side because you always want your belt in straight alignment. And you'll notice that some of the speeds, like for instance, I can't use the biggest pulley here and the big pulley here. That's not going to work. So you, you need to find the speeds that work best and do your adjustment. Um, so as, we, as I said earlier, when we ship the unit, we ship it in slow speed and we recommend for people that have not had extensive use of the bull wheel to start with a slower speed and then work your speeds up uh, as you go. So that's the basics on changing the belt. It doesn't have to be super tight. I'll just snuggle it with my hand here. You can bring the camera around and then I'll tighten the handle right here. Um, and now my belt is, is tightened and then replace the lid. I'm going to show you how to put a belt on expanding wheel. In this case, we're going to be using the bull wheel to put the belt on. 
Um, as you'll see, the expanding drum expands with centrifugal force. So as it speeds up, these little flaps push out and it holds the belt in place. So to put the belt on, it's a little tricky with a new belt because I basically need to get it in place all around the circle. And I can't push one side too fast, otherwise it'll bind. It's like a Chinese handcuff. So I basically need to work the belt on uh, just a step at a time. So I'm sliding it on slowly. Now I'm not binding um, so that I can get it to go on. And it can be a little tricky with a new drum. This is a brand new drum, never been used. It's gonna be a little bit tight, but there we go. Um, so now my belt is in place. Uh, when I turn on the machine, this the drum centrifugal force will expand and it'll hold the belt in place. Um, to change the, the polishing wheel, there's two uh, uh, polishing, uh, uh, two plates that are shipped with this, or two discs. There is the flat disc right here, and this is for use with a pressure sensitive adhesive. It sticks to that. Now, if any of you wondered what are the holes in the back, Everything we do, we balance precision, so you don't have vibration. So you'll see holes drilled that are changing the, the, the density uh, so this doesn't vibrate. You also notice even on the hub here, you'll see holes that are used for balancing here. We balance all this stuff for high speed performance. So when I go put my leather wheel on, the leather wheel ships some package. I'll just pop it out. Um, and uh, I didn't show you earlier but I would use an allen wrench to loosen the two set screws um, and the set screws if you bring the camera in the set screws you want to have tightened against the flat part of the shaft so you'll notice there's a flat that's been machined on the shaft and that's where you want to have those set screws aligned and tighten up to and therefore it reduces the chance of your uh, drum or your disc um, slipping so I'm going to go ahead and just pull this uh, bow wheel uh, leather polishing disc out pop that out of the bag and you'll notice that there I've got two set screws. Now these are on a 45 degree angle. Um, I just need to make sure that one of these is touching that flat. So I'm gonna line up, I'll look to see where that flat is, and then I'm gonna put this drum in place. And then after it's in place, I mean this uh, dome wheel in place, then I'll go ahead and I'll use an Allen wrench here to tighten the one up. Um, and you don't have to get crazy tightening it down. You just need to have it tightened enough so it's snug um, and it's not gonna come loose on you and then I'll do the other one as well. Now, a couple of notes when you're using a leather polishing disc uh, is typically you'll be using a cerium oxide. Now, we recommend a semiconductor grade cerium oxide polish. Now, we get it out of the semiconductor industry because it's the highest purity. It doesn't have a bunch of bullshit fillers in it. And this typically, there's a real high grade, which you typically think about as a French, which tends to be more white. And there's a lower grade that's a little bit more pink. Uh, we like that the semiconductor grade because it's extremely consistent particle size and it works very well. So when you start using your bull wheel with the leather disc, the one important thing you've got to remember is always run slow speed. So remember, there's different speeds to this. When you're using your leather disc, you must run the slowest speed. If you run a high speed, you risk bodily harm and you risk having the wheel be damaged by having it come apart. So we always tell people when you go to put the leather wheel on, always run the very slow speed because you can't polish high speed anyway. You're gonna end up heating up your agates uh, too fast and cause heat fracturing. So when you'll start using this, and I'll be shooting video later about how to actually apply cerium on another machine, you'll wanna be putting some cerium with a little bit of water on this pad and you'll essentially charge this pad by putting the wet cerium uh, paste uh, which is kind of a, a little bit of a wet paste on here to be able to have it and then you'll be working your stone. I'll do more on that in a separate video, but that's the basics of setting up your bull wheel, changing the speed of it, uh, putting the belt on, putting the drum on uh, the machine. The big thing as I re re reiterate is safety is real important. When you're running a machine like this, never ever place your hands on top of things. Like for instance, this is a pinch port here. You know, never place your hands here, never wear loose clothing, don't have long hair, uh, because if you get caught, even though we do a lot of protective action, you can get caught in here. So never ever use gloves. That's a real important one. I've seen people say, I'll use gloves. Never use gloves when using machine. That's pretty much standard in most uh, uh, operations, but a lot of people that are new may think using gloves is a good idea. It's a terrible idea. Um, so that's about it.